Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to show you how to use an end user's credential to post a transaction back to SAP. As you uh, already know, in a workflow based system, when a system activity is uh, getting executed, you typically do not have an access to the end user's credential and that's why it makes use of a service account to make a call back into uh, the backend system. Same is true for any ASP.NET or other applications if it has been, uh, or a web service application where a transaction has been posted back and it makes uh, use of a service account to connect back into the third party systems. Now SAP uh, traditionally is a very secured system and then there are very stringent security rules around it where users know because they are dealing with huge amount of uh, money uh, which can amount to millions of dollars as well. They want to see the actual approver's name uh, in, in the SAP transaction. This is traditionally one of the hindrances when people try to use the SAP connector in past. Uh, in Agile Point NX, uh, on so after software update 6, we have introduced uh, a unique way of uh, achieving this functionality uh, of using the end user's credential uh, in, in the Agile paths at runtime. This is available for SAP systems only. Uh, rest of the systems would still continue working the same way it is because uh, else it would get very complicated. So let me uh, show you an example of this. So let's do add an app. I'll type SAP and the credential demo. Go ahead and click next. I'll add a process model. Leave it as eform. Now I'll start defining uh, my process. The first thing I'll drag and drop a uh, submit form. On the form I'm going to place two fields uh, just like I did in my previous demo. I'm going to go here and say two columns. So all I'm going to do is a very simple demo where I'm going to show you a concept that I'm going to enter the employee name and it is going to fetch back the employee number. So there are two ways of doing that either on the form or or through the process. On the form the lookups are still going to use the central account which is defined in an access token which uh, which is what uh, we want because th that's all that is doing is uh, reading the data. You don't have to set up separate security for each end user. However while posting the transaction through the process you might want to basically use the end user credential and that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to call it employee name. And the second text box I'm going to put over here is going to be called employee number. So first I'm going to show you nothing has changed from a, a, a form lookup perspective. So I'm going to drag and drop an auto lookup control over here and then go and define a lookup source. I'm going to select SAP select an access token. I don't have one any so I'll go ahead and define a new one. I'm going to select the local connector. It shows me all the available connections uh, as sh I showed in my previous video. Now this time I have one with uh, with uh, credential set as user. If you want to just quickly see it, if I go over here, the SAP connector hub. The one with user basically doesn't ask me to enter any username password it would ask me to provide that at runtime. Now of course for design time I do need to provide one username password so that design time it doesn't keep asking user for uh, every time username password so I'm going to say use this account for the design time configuration. At runtime we will use a dynamic username and I'm going to say okay go ahead test connection It validates my uh, the username password against SAP system. The connection is successful. I'm going to give it a lookup name. So say get user ID. And I'm going to make it a multi-column lookup. I have to enter the name of my BAPI. So I'm going to use the same BAPI. I'll just do a partial search. 
select the mappy and then provide the input output mappy pretty standard same as what I showed in the last demo where I basically go in and do the mapping and the return output should be an employee number which I map to the employee number and I'll say that execute this lookup when a specific field value changes which is employee name so whenever I change the employee name execute it I can quickly test it out so I'm going to put the employee name and tab out of this field and it gets back the employee number just as I showed in the last demo however now we want that whenever so from a lookup perspective it is okay to do it as in, uh, as in a central account which was specified in the access token but when posting back some transaction through the process into SAP I wanted to use the end user credential so in order to use that there is a new control which has been um, added which is called secure credential as of now this is only for SAP connections we might add a couple of more uh, in future uh, for uh, other systems but as of now this is only for SAP so I, I'm going to put a label and this is the label which will show up on the on the user uh, credential dialog box so I'm going to say SAP credential and as of now as I said the only system it supports is SAP and it asks me which access token it should use to uh, validate the user whatever user has entered on the on the credential screen because we want to make sure that it is the right username else it could uh, and password else it could fail at runtime okay let's go ahead and check that in next just for the demo purpose what I'm going to do is so that we can see what's happening behind the scene I'm going to put a five minute delay I'm going to just set it to five minutes so I have enough time to show you what's happening behind the scene and then I'm going to add a SAP uh, shape I'm going to open the SAP stencil I'm going to add an SAP call before I do that let's just go ahead and define one temporary node in my model data I'm going to call it temp I'm going to call uh, the same uh, BAPI so uh, temp employee ID okay and let's go ahead select the SAP connection which I had defined in the previous step enter the name of the BAPI now if you see depending on what kind of a credential I selected because I selected the one with user it opened up a third tab called advanced configuration if I selected the one with pooled account like I was doing in, in past uh, demo then it would only show me the input and output uh, tabs okay just in case if you, uh, you want to see that let's just quickly do that as well I'm going to just say demo and I'm going to select the pooled account right and just quickly test the connection done so if I select that I just see the input output tabs but if I switch back to the user credential one then I see an additional tab over here I'm going to quickly copy a name of a BAPI again do a search select the BAPI now once this is done I'm going to specify my mapping I'm going to say pass employee number oh, sorry employee name and get back the employee number and store it in temporary employee ID as a process field pretty standard till now now I go to the third tab this is where uh, the all the magic happens so what happens is I can specify that whether I want to make a call under the the access to the user specified in access token or I can say use the end user credential from secure store now when I do that it would ask me what users credential right so I need to still specify the username so if you remember I had dragged and dropped the secure uh, credential control it has the username password password is never going to be stored over here uh, we, we do store the username password is stored in a separate table in agile point which I will show you I'm going to just drag and drop this and I'm going to leave the last part unchecked for the first part of the demo basically what it does is because on the form I have I have cached the user credentials and kept it in one of my backend tables which is called secure credential manager 
i let user decide when he wants that to get rid of that uh, cache password so for this step i am not going to stay, say that uh, clear it because i know that uh, further down in the process i want to use the same credentials again at my whenever i have i'm done using it i can i can specify that okay kill the uh, cache immediately or if i don't specify anything when the process instance is completed it automatically it, uh, clears any cached uh, passwords and all the passwords are stored in encrypted format anyways i'll leave it for uh, now this way and i'm going to do the same thing again i'm going to again put a 5 minute timer anyways might already be familiar of it by now i'm going to duplicate the control so that i can save some configuration time and this time i'm going to say kill the password i'm i'm done calling uh, using this credential so cache credential clear it okay so you can see the effect of it when i run the demo and i'm going to go ahead and check in publish and let's go to work center I'm going to kick off a instance of this i'm going to copy the username put it in the employee field when i tab out of it it's using the access token to retrieve back all the da read only data on my form but when i click on submit this is where the change happens because i said that okay use the end user credentials and i wanted to do that it asks end user to provide its credentials so that they can be used further down in the process and these these are have to be properly validated and the validation is in there so if i put a random username password it would tell me that remember i selected the access token it tells me this is not a valid sap username password so i'm going to enter the correct one now and say okay and the form is submitted successfully at this point of time if i go back into my database table and click refresh there's a new row which has been created the scope of this is process instance id its key is process instance id this the username is brock system is of type sap nobody can read the password it is stored in encrypted format at this point of time and then there are a few more columns right now if i go here to my manage center then look up for that instance expand it and go to process viewer what i'm going to do is you already saw that there is a secured credential cache which has been created i'm going to go ahead and update it and uh, bypass the delay so what would happen is the sap activity gets executed and now it is waiting for another 5 minutes now remember i said on this activity do not clear the cache credential so it should still be in the table if i go over here the credentials are still maintained however we can maintain a complete audit history so if i go to the uh, info log for sap connector you can see that the process connected to sap on behalf of this user using user credential and for what instance what activity this is stored in both the log as well as audit trail table in agile point so because we are impersonating a user it should all be tracked properly now i'm going to go ahead and bypass the uh, and by the way before i do that if i go and refresh my data and see it has brought down the employee number in my temporary field now let's go back to process monitor and bypass this delay now in the next activity i said clean up the credentials immediately okay now if i go over here and refresh again the credentials are gone and the second call would have happened with that credential as well so as you can see the second call just now happened with that credential right now this is one way of doing it now what we have done is we have written this as an interface so that if somebody says that okay i do not though it is a secured credential store in agile point they said that i do not want to use uh, store this credential in your table i'll somehow just give me the username i'll somehow uh, give you back the password 
we have written this as an interface keeping that in mind that you remember in the schema object if I go back to the schema I have got the username in there right I don't store the passwords I can give them the username and they can figure it out from wherever they want but out of the box we pro already provide a secure credential store and you have complete uh, control over when to clean it up with this the idea is that people who are very hesitant using SAP connectors due to the nature of uh, security in SAP and they wanted some of the transactions to be done under the credentials of an end user they can now use agile point if you look at uh, some of the other products out there they basically are using the they make user enter username and password on the form and and they store it in clear text in their their data form data we do not store it in uh, clear text because that would be a big security flaw but we still let you um, use the end user credentials at runtime to connect back to sap thank you